Yeah, hello, we want to make this drawing from scratch. So I'm going to start a new file. So we go to this arrow here. New. A card. And open. So in the textbook, this is the drawing. And the steps before that say we should give it a name, AutoCAD 2D Lab. And to be unit to be in inches, so we're using the card um, template. It requires us to have two layers, construction and object layer, to create those layers before we start drawing. Right now, so we save this drawing. I'll close the old one. Save changes, yes. So we have a new drawing and we're going to save it. We'll click on save. And we're giving it a name, AutoCAD. I'm pasting it because I copied it from the AutoCAD 2D Lab 16.1, save. And the first things we need to do, create our layers. We go to the Home tab, Layer Properties. And then to make a new layer, we click on this. It has to automatically for me. And I'll go to the first one, double click to rename it um, Construction. construction and the second one will be object for our objects it's red okay and we change the line width to 0.4 so that it's thicker okay and for our construction line we want to change the line type to the broken lines as they appear in the drawing so we load the line load one that has a um, dash, dash and space three W, okay. And okay. So we have our two layers, I will close it up. And so we go back to our drawing, where to start from, it shows us the start point X18 and Y13. So go back here, select line or type line, and then we say X is 18, let's look at that again. X18, Y13, so 18, 13, enter. So that is the first point. Make a horizontal move. The next one is a three, and then three, eight, five, six, seven, okay? So I keep it in this direction and say three. And the next one is a three, eight, five, three point eight, five, six, seven, enter. So escape. The width from this center of the circle to the beginning is 11.42. So I'm going to offset for that. For that, I need a vertical line. So I pick the line. I draw this line and I offset 11.42, enter. Select and there. Uh, so to make this step part, I'll draw it as a separate line. So pick the line and we remember, oh, make sure that you have a construction as the current layer. So pick line and I'll draw it to that point. So we have our, because we're drawing, we have this point from here to here three, we have this distance three eight, and then we have this point at 3.42. So to draw this depressed, this um, side that has a V, we're giving the angles 150, 130. So come back to the drawing line again, and we'll see where that first point is for 150, we click. And we see the angles that are showing are less, let's say they are less than um, the angle we're looking at is 150. So from our mathematics, we know that the angle on a straight line is 180. And if we want to get the angle behind, 180 minus 150 is 30. So what we're looking out for is 30. So click here. And then the second line is at 130. I'll go back here, select line. And this is where that starts from. I want a line of 130. So because it's in this um, direction, it's showing the full angle. So I'm going to move to, let's say, 130. 
and I can use stream or chamfer to make it work. I'm used to chamfer, so I select it and then I'll click on the two lines and that's it. And then I'll delete this point here. So now I have my horizontal line this way. Let's look at the vertical side. From this point down, we have uh, six. And then from this point, we're told that the radius of this circle is four and the internal radius is three. So we can get our six and then make a circle of four. Let's do these next two steps. So we offset by six. And when we offset by six, we bring this line to that point. Okay, and then we have, right, so we have a circle, the radius of the radius or diameter now, it's a four diameter. So the four, the, the diameter of this circle is four and the diameter of the second circle is three. We'll go for the circle and the center point. We draw it on this uh, line and then we'll move it in. So we use the line as center point and we say D for diameter and it's four, enter. So now we have this uh, circle for four. We move it, we can move it from this edge and then here. So that's the position of that circle. But we want to get the second circle with a diameter of three. So we collect the circle. If you hover in the middle of the circle to show you the center point, so we click in the center and then see the diameter is three. Okay. So when we have this point, we look out for this change in direction. So it tells us that here from the center to this point is 1.75. And then the height here 0.25. So I'm going to get me a line for this center. And then offset by 1.75. So, and then I'll offset for those two sides, 0.25. And so we chamfer to get that edge, press space bar, we we'll chamfer again. And then we'll trim to this circle. Okay. So we'll trim at this point too. So now we have the two circles, go back to our join. The next thing we want to get is this hexagon. So first, the distance from the center to the center of the hexagon is 4.5. And then the distance from this center of the circle to the center of the hexagon is two. So we are we're offsetting in two directions, offset by 4.5. And then we'll offset by two. So I'll extend this line first. And then I'll offset by two. So this is the center of our hexagon. I'll go for it and it's here. If you don't see it, click on this angle. Where you have rectangle, click on the arrow and you'll find polygon, click on that. And it'll ask you, what's the number of sides? So from our drawing, we have six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so we, we put here that it has six sides, enter. So what is the center? We have the center here and it says inscribed in the circle. This means that we can draw a circle around the edges. So we leave it at, at the inscribed and enter. And it asks us for the radius. So we'll go to look at the drawing and we see that from the center to the top, we're not giving or even diameter, we divide it by two, we have a one. So our radius is one. Maybe in this direction, I'm putting one. And if we look at it, we see that it's lying down. So we need to rotate it to be like the drawing. So click on it, rotate, center, and then you turn it through 90 degrees and then you have it standing. 
in the correct uh, direction. So the next thing we want to do are these four circles. If you look over here, you see that we have a nine radius and this radius has a center here. So let's draw that circle construction line that we do the circles. So we click on the circle. This is the center. And then the radius is nine. So nine and enter. That is a construction line, but because of the line type, it's um, breaking. So we need to, for now, change it to continue so that we can see all the parts. So I would like to trim this circle. Now put the horizontal line here. Just for now, if I need to extend it, maybe I'll do that. So trim. Now I can trim it to the two circles. So I put something to cut it and see. So how do we get the points for the little circles? From the center, right? From the center, we have one sitting right at the center. And we're told that the diameter is 0.5 in four places. So I go back here. I pick a circle, I know that my diameter is 0.5 on the same line as this circle. So I'm escaping from the circle now so that I make sure I get the point. This is the center line. I select it and I go over here. So I pick the circle again, pick the center point and I have 0.5 diameter. So D first for diameter, then 0.5, enter. So we have our first of the four circles. And from these dimensions, we see that this is 15 up, another 15 degrees up, 15 degrees up, 15 degrees, and then 10 degrees down. So we'll draw those lines at um, 15 degrees and 10 degrees up from that line. So line here. So at this point, it is 180. So 15 degrees up is 165. 165 up. Click. And then another 15 degree will be 150. Then below, we're going in 10 degrees. So 180 and then it will be 170 minus 10. Okay, so we have the points for our circle. What we need to do is copy this circle. So now we have our circles on the line. We want to go ahead and get this circle. So from here to here is the radius of this circle, and this radius is one. So I'll set by one from the top. So when I get this one from the top, I know that this line shows where the, the center is. So when they cross, that's where pull it to the line where it cross. And then I'll trim these lines to this point so that we don't have too many lines crossing each other. So I select that line and when I trim, it will trim up to that line. Okay, so we want to draw that circle of one, uh, radius with the radius of one. So circle, center, one, enter. And then it has another circle inside. So we have only one R and then 0.375 R. So go and draw that circle 0.375 for the R. That's the second one. We have a, diameter, a dimension from here down. So go look it up. From the center here to the center at the ending is 7.4173. So go back there and offset. 7.4173. And then um, so we have this height here. 
we have this distance so get we need to get the this is nine this is one we need to know what this is okay if we have this distance or rather this radius as 0.375 we can offset from this line 0.375 now we have this radius as one, so we can offset by one. So basically working with those distances from the, the circles. So let's offset and let's uh, make, we have this line, we need to make the, I think we can copy it because it's parallel to the line. So copy, select it, copy it, and then drop it in the middle here. So this doesn't look pretty. So I'll, Go back here. How do we get this line here? I think in the same direction, we need to offset it here, it's not copy it, but offset from here. So what will be the distance from here to here? I need to measure that. So I use my dimension to check the distance from this center to this line. And then we can offset it. So I'll go to the angular dimension we have this called align click on it and then come to this so when you see this um, perpendicular mark you know that we're in the right direction so one six six four seven okay so I'll offset by one point six six four seven so i take this offset you see it's sitting directly in the middle there so once i have that this line i can go ahead and offset with the radius now so offset by 0 0.375 and then offset well i'll do both ways because we have this appearing both ways yes. and then i'll offset by one but before that let me trim so I'll select this circle and then trim mm, Control z Okay, so I'll trim to this line and make this point needs to meet the circle. All right, so the next thing will be to uh, offset by one for this outer circle. So offset by one and then try to trim that. Okay, that works and then so we have the outer bounds of our ship now where does this end go to the ship we see that we have the 10 degree and then another line here i read this from the middle here if we look at this uh, at this point yes we have this point already seven four one seven three so where do these two lines cross the seven four one seven three and the middle line here so i go back this is my seven four one three volts i need to double check so i'll go to my dimension and check is this my seven four line that's okay on linear here so that's seven four one three so this line crosses this line at this point. So what I need to do is copy these two circles, one and two circles, copy. And then come to this point where they meet and drop it. And I will do some housekeeping, trim it. Come here. Trim, I'll, I'll delete this line because I used it to trim the circle. And trim and Come here and click. So these points are not there. This is a broken line. These points are not there either. And so I also trim here because it's in a different color. And then I go to my arc, ensure that we have a start end angle type of arc. So click here and here. And then Let's see. Just making an inverse arc. Delete that. Click on arc again. 
use this outwards and then if I go up here, I click yes. So now we can change some of the properties to red when the time is right to complete that red part. But for now, this piece is a curve. So let's find out how that curves. It's a 0.75 radius um, fillet that we used to make there. So go back to the join and come to this arrow fillet. And then at this point, we need to put in R 0 0.75, enter. So we have this edge and we're going to this, what's left to do now is this bottom part and then this um, arc at the bottom yet. Tangent. So, we have a tangent coming up from this point. Before I do that, I will delete this um, line so it's not too busy. So we have a tangent coming from the top here. So in order to draw that tangent, I'll go for a line. Once we have the line, do shift and right click and then select tangent. So we pick a point here and we come down to make a tangent too with this circle, okay. When we do that, we trim, trim this off. Okay, so once we get this tangent, we have uh, two different line properties there too. So we trim it and then extend it back so that it's broken as in two parts, okay? So the last thing we need to do, okay, we have the last two things. We need to make this arc here and then we also need to take care of this edge. So this line ends here. I'll trim it off. The last thing is um, an arc that has a five, a radius of five. So I'll come to the arc here and, and look for the one that has the radius. So we say start, end, radius. That means we want the beginning, the end, and the radius. So it says specify the start points. When I look at this picture, it's like here's a start point, And then here is the end point. So come to my drawing. I get to I come to this point, this is that point. And on the end point, let's try the radius again. So shift and right click and then tangent. So it lets me pick somewhere the tangent. And it says um, specify radius, hold and control to switch direction. So my radius is five. Now I'll, I'll put that for the radius. Enter. So hold. I want to switch the direction of this arc now. We know that it's going in. And we also know that it doesn't cross the circle. So I'm going to bring it out. Out of that circle. And make it. Make it um, end here. And I'll trim it. So I'll trim this now. bring it down so it doesn't cross the line. Yeah, so there we have our shape. So let's make the red, the object layer. So for object layer, I'll select this and then change it to red. And then if I want to change other things to red, I'll go for match properties, select the one I want to collect the property from and go around. So I'm making the objects red now because I trimmed it so half of it will be red. This point red too. We have our circles and we have the hexagon, this outer lines and this. I'll go back and um, check, make sure we have the right thing. So this is this, this ought to be trimmed. We have the circle crossing. And then we can dimension. So trim. Okay. 
Yeah, so after trimming that, I can select this, right click, properties, and then give it a scale. So when you adjust the line type scale, it changes the dashes on the body. So I'm going to make it 0.2 to see how much dash that didn't show up. So I'll put in 0.02. Yeah, so you can see some dashes there. So I'll match the property with others that have the dash line, especially this one. This two, and then for the construction line, I go to the scale and make it um, 0.5. You want to see some dashes? That's not big enough. So, to use this 0, 2, if I try 0, 5 for this, what happens? It's bigger dashes. I'm going to make it 7. Okay, so match, match properties for that in these other lines construction lines so with this i'll go back and also check for any other thing we need to draw yeah also done that so we can dimension now so put in the dimensions go to annotate oh and annotate check here for the linear dimensions so we pick from here to this point three as it is in the drawing you can come up here for continue and then click on those other points to so start again escape linear click here come over here we have that 11.42 to get the vertical aspects from here to here we're giving us six and then we were giving from the middle of here to the middle of this point as 4.5 we're giving the middle of this point to the middle of this point as two and then for the radius we have all those curves so for radius here and then once you click on the circle and then pull it out it will give you the dimension hit your space bar click on another circle pull it out space bar hit another circle pull it out to get two and then that way we get the dimension so can get this done and then send me an email or upload on Blackboard. Thank you.